Okay, welcome, pen pals. And now for something completely different, as the phrase goes. Today we have a uh, pen that we're not usually used to seeing on the channel here. This is uh, the Parker Ingenuity. This is a fifth mode pen, which we'll get into a full explanation about later. But to uh, to do the unboxing, we have one that's sort of, sort of unboxed already, but uh, we'll uh, open this guy up here. So cardboard white sleeve. We have, this is the Parker, established 1888. Very nice, like kind of like a linen outer, nice textured box here. We've got the little tab that says, open me, and it's magnetically enclosed here. So when it closes, it has that kind of like that little nice uh, clasp at the very end, and it kind of unwraps here to unveil the uh, Parker Ingenuity pen. And uh, as I had mentioned uh, in some of the videos before, uh, with uh, let's say the Pilot Custom, the 823, uh, which really bears no marketing superlatives, the the Parker Ingenuity is kind of full of the marketing uh, sort of super superlatives that kind of uh, you know turn some people off, and I think that. You know, if you kind of give this pen a chance, and if you are into rollerballs or felt tips, I think that you might be missing out on a pen that's really well made and has a has a nice uh, you know, felt tip that goes along with it uh, that I think that you would enjoy. So we took the little plate that's off of here, which kind of has a little peekaboo sort of slot that's over here. And what's up to uh, everybody that's joining in here and just, uh, you know, feel free to just leave some comments down below. You could hate on this pen all you'd like to if you need to. So <laughs> don't worry, I won't be offended if you don't like this pen. Uh, but uh, but yeah, give it a little bit of a chance, though, because we're just going to go through and and uh, and take a look at this on ingenuity. Um, it is uh, so so we're just looking at the unboxing. So there's a platform. It's kind of like a foam interior that's here. and It's got the little strap that popped the pen out. So you take that out and first thing that you see here is like kind of like a little bit of a impromptu diagram instructional guide here uh, that tells you essentially that there is a dummy cartridge inside of the pen to start with and that in order to write with the pen you should put in the real cartridge. Awesome! Thank you for telling me that because I mean gosh I wouldn't have been able to figure that one out um, sarcastically speaking, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you got your, uh, your Parker, which I mean, has all sorts of different writing modes in here as an instructional guide. Uh, and then we've got the cartridge. Yay. So we got that at the bottom, the, uh, fifth mode cartridge, something that, uh, you don't see every day. It kind of looks like a rollerball cartridge. It kind of looks like a felt tip cartridge. It kind of looks like the underside of a uh, of a fountain pen feed a little bit so this cartridge is made uh, specifically for this particular pen and it's shaped only to fit this pen so don't try fitting it in any other rollerball or felt tip pens because it probably will not fit it most likely will not fit uh, so the, really the the big key design element here is this tip which is flexible so you can see I'm moving it around here and playing around with it. And then at the very tip, you can notice it's like a porous point, sort of like extra fine, super, super fine kind of felt tip, Sharpie tip or whatever. But you can see you can kind of mess around with it. It's got a little bit of play. So uh, that is supposed to interact with the pen itself to provide more of a comfortable and customizable writing experience as I'm bobbling with things around here. So when you get the Ingenuity pen, it's a snap cap, and it's a very tight snap cap. We're going to unveil the Ingenuities section here, which looks a lot like a fountain pen, does it not? It looks like a lot like a uh, fountain pen nib, but it really isn't. So you can see kind of like where, you know, typically with a fountain pen, you'd have two tines that have the, the tine slit in the middle and a little breather hole, and it would have the, the branding of the, the nib and whatnot, but it's not because it reveals that you've got the dummy cartridge inside, which we're going to swap out. So... This is the dummy refill, not for use. I can't tell you, I think already, because this pen's been around for a while, 
And I think we've had it where uh, people have received the pens and have said, my pen does not write. Um, but uh, I think they make it pretty obvious that really you should not be using this dummy cartridge that's in there. Pop it in with the real one, which only seats itself in one way. So if I try putting it in like a different way, it kind of guides itself through and puts the flat part up against the, the metal part of the, uh, the section here. And uh, also when you screw this back shut, you, you kind of feel that there's a little bit of like a tension involved because there's a, there's a spring at the very bottom of this brass uh, barrel that's here. So overall, just kind of speaking about the aesthetics beyond the actual, the actual writing mode itself, which is, you know, one of the uh, parts that we could talk about at length, the pen itself looks good. And Joseph, I agree. It's a very nice looking pen. Elegant. You know, it's got a it's got a tapered cylindrical barrel style. You know, it's 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 got a gorgeous, lustrous black lacquer finish. It's got on the uh barrel uh finial here, it's got a plain old uh chrome finished disc on here. And at the top here, which I'm trying to get uh, a nice like detail shot of here but it's it's done with kind of like a radial uh engraved finish like so the top disc here has like a nice kind of radial finish on the top there and it's got the of course the iconic parker arrow clip i mean you can't go wrong with one of these guys here and it's got the uh parker logo with the little arrow on here And uh, and then also too the section, you know, looking at the section, it's got the it's got a little bit of ribbing here, so it's engraved, or I guess uh, crafted so that there's these uh, lines that run through it, and you could hold on to it, and it's a metal section, so and it tapers downward, so I guess to kind of make it a bit more grip friendly, you would want to have some sort of grip. I would prefer like a matte grip. Uh, especially with the other guy that's over here, the the rubberized finish, so a matte grip would have been awesome, uh, because then it would give you that extra bit of you know area to a little bit more of a tack to hold that uh, to hold the pen nice and securely. So I'll show you the other one that's over here. I'll just move this to the side. So this is the what's called the large style. So the large style is is a fairly formidable size. It's uh, five and a half inches closed, which is 139.7 millimeters. Then you have the open, it's, a, it's an even five inches or 127 millimeters. Then posted, it doesn't post very deeply, but it does post nice and secure. The, this guy here, the, the black and gold the, with the rubberized finish actually is a little bit, is a hair larger when it's posted at 6.55 inches, whereas the uh, lacquer version is 6.5 inches or 165 uh, millimeters. So, um, and also too is the weight because of the fact that you've got additional metal here. And I think the, um, the matted uh, rubberized lacquer tends to be a little bit heavier. The weight is a little bit different. It is a, it is a fairly solid pen. The lacquer version is 1.4 ounces or 39.7 grams. And you have the rubberized with the metal rings here. Um, this is 1.6 ounces or 45.36 grams. So fairly, you know, significant heft in both of these pens and also fairly significant length, especially when you post the cap on the back. So it's a long pen. Um, and, it's, and especially considering that the weight is on the heavier side becomes a little bit too much, in my opinion, uh, you know, too much weight on the back end to be able to write with this and, and feel comfortable. So talking about comfort and writing, let's give it a go with the writing sample. So I'm just moving all my stuff off to the side. And we've got something very special coming in for you guys tomorrow. We're going to work on doing a, a video for that as well. But we are expecting our 1911 Sea Glass exclusive sailors. This is completely unrelated, but I just figured I'd mention it anyway since I'm getting stuff all moved around here. So we're expecting those to actually arrive tomorrow, which means then that everybody could get them under their trees. That would be awesome. So it's something that we weren't necessarily expecting to arrive before Christmas, but 
hey, it did, and it's all the better for it. So that would be something that uh, you guys could take a look at, and we'll, we'll do a full re video review and whatnot on those. So kind of starting off with this guy first, I had swapped it out with a – we have a blue fine refill, and actually I have the – other refills here too so we could actually test out all four different point size type refills because we have two in the black and two in the blue fine and medium both a piece so we could see what each uh, refill tip brings and these are proprietary cartridges that um, only Parker manufactures and they are kind of expensive so just to, just to forewarn you if you're falling in love with this pen you have expensive refills but they do last a while so let's go with a this is the Parker Ingenuity. Oh. Fifth mode. Pen. And this is the blue fine point refill. So, I have to say, extremely smooth. I mean, one of the gripes I tend to have with rollerballs is that you would kind of, especially with the fact that the ball is, is rolling around in the socket, you would kind of feel a little bit of that metallic sort of grinding that would be in there, especially if you put a little bit of pressure on it. But felt tips are, are really renowned for their kind of like their feather light touch. And that's really what you get out of this is a, a very feather light touch. You don't have to put any pressure at all to, uh, to really get a nice rich mark like I did here. So that's, uh, that's where you kind of would say, well, this comparatively kind of gives you a little bit of that fountain pen experience where you don't really have to put any pressure at all to generate a very rich, um, saturated line. So I'll put that aside. We'll try this guy out here. And this one, I am pretty sure where we have black medium point. Now, I, I, I just read quickly a, uh, a comment about the not needing uh, a, a reason to kind of disguise it as a fountain pen. Um, you know, it, it, does kind of, it does kind of seem like you are taking the aesthetics of a fountain pen and then transmitting them and putting them into a, a rollerball or a felt tip sort of mode where the uh, convenience of being able just to switch out a cartridge and not have to fuss around with fountain pen ink is kind of the the whole idea behind doing uh, you know like a rollerball, uh, but you're getting the best of the of the world of like kind of like looking like a fountain pen. But it does have a little bit of a of a purpose um, in terms of the functionality, uh, the the flexible tip here. It does meet with the uh, the metal tines to kind of provide a solid backing so that the tip doesn't flop around like I was kind of playing with it uh, before the the tip is is flexible so if I put if I put pressure on it it's going to move around and it kind of returns back to form but um, you know it's it's very you know it's very pliable so you would need to have that that metal that's here especially if you press hard because if you press hard this kind of pen has just a just enough give, just a little bit enough give. And I was trying to see if like, oh, hey, you know, could I make like, could I make this like a, um, like one of those Tombow brush marker pens where, you know, I could put like a little bit of line variation on it. And I mean, like, yeah, uh, just like a very, very little bit. So I'm just doing that here. And this is the black medium point. I could eke out just a very like minuscule amount of just line variation just by the fact that I'm putting a little bit more pressure on it. Um, but it, it, you know, really it's not meant uh, to replace a fountain pen. And if it was, then, you know, then they really failed miserably at doing that. But the, uh, 
Uh, but the idea is that, you know, th that like rollerballs, ballpoints, you know, fountain pens have been around for a long, long time. They wanted to have some place for the for the felt tip and uh, and really felt tips are called a whole bunch of different things and really aren't given their place in like luxury status per se because you have like it's tend to be like an office supply sort of item you think sharpies you think tombos you think color markers you think that but like it doesn't really have its place so much in in fine writing except for this particular pen model so that's kind of where i feel that they went with this and i you know just kind of you know, my own opinion about it is I don't feel that this was this was successful enough that they, you know, that they did a good enough job at kind of getting that point across because I do feel that there's a little bit too much effort in trying to market this as something that it's not, which is just it's a, it's a nice felt tip pen. You know, it's a, it's a it's a really nice elegant, you know, felt tip pen that you could see people, you know, pulling out during a meeting, writing notes or signing important documents. So this is the, I'm trying now, the fine point, just to give you the, an idea of the point size difference. And you can see, definitely gives you a thinner line, probably more like what I would probably say would be equivalent if you were looking at a fountain pen as like an extra fine, you know, in terms of the line width and the amount of ink that's on the paper. And just to take a quick look at the paper itself and just the line quality here, it, it holds itself well. The ink also dries pretty quick and it's not smudgy. So that's that's another positive of this ink that they use. I don't have any. This is Rhodia paper. I don't have any bleed through or show through on the other side there. So that is a that is a positive that's there. I'm trying to remain optimistic, people. I'm trying to remain positive about this experience because I mean, hey. You know, there's, there's pens for everybody, whether, you know, you you prefer fountain pens, which I do, of course, or that you prefer ballpoints or rollerballs or felt tips. So there's something for everybody. And there's no there's no one true, like, this is the best pen in the world for everybody. It's very personal. So it's something that requires some soul searching, maybe a little bit of... Uh, of of travel and and trying to find out and research so let's take a look at this is the blue in the fine or no this is the blue in the medium i think right what did we do the blue yes we did this so this is the blue medium so let's do this up here So there you go. And the blue's a really nice color blue too. Very bright. And this is all you're looking at here. This is the ink colors available in this, in these uh, fifth mode refills. It used to be available in a bunch of other colors. I think there was, uh, there was like a light blue, there was a purple and olive and stuff, but they've since uh, cut down their availability of those and have discontinued those colors which is yet another reason why fountain pens would be a much better option because you could use all sorts of different uh, ink colors and you know not married to a particular type of proprietary cartridge, which this is. So um, you could go and do that. And um, Roy had mentioned 
uh, something about trying to hack this cartridge. So I would like to issue that challenge for people to hack this cartridge. and be able to fill it with fountain pen ink. I would like to know if that is possible because that would make it a lot more fun and enjoyable and give you a lot more colors to choose from as opposed to just black and blue. It'd, it'd be awesome. But I mean, for all, in, all intents and purposes, this is a felt tip pen with a bit more of a luxury type style. And uh, as an ulterior motive of, of doing this video as well, we are offering these up as our weekly dip for December the 12th uh, through the 19th. And these are going to be marked down quite significantly so that uh, if you have a gift uh, to someone who likes a nice pen, prefers felt tip or roller balls, that uh, this would be quite affordable pen because these usually run in the hundreds of dollars and we're going to cut that that price down very significantly uh, this afternoon at two o'clock so um, that being said there's going to be a couple of other i think styles that go along with this too these are just two of the particular styles that will be going on sale but um, there will be others uh, that follow suit as well so uh let's see i think uh, just one more point is that the refills uh, themselves uh, we sell them individually in black or blue, fine or medium. They are $9.50 each, uh, which is a bit of a pricier type of refill. But keep in mind, again, they are um, proprietary to Parker, uh, you know, all rights and what have you reserved. So um, appreciate it was guys tuning in and not throwing all of your hate behind this video, because I know that uh, all, of you, all of you might have uh, differing opinions on these uh, particular types of modes uh, and uh, this particular type of pen. So I appreciate it um, you know, that you guys give some of your constructive criticisms behind this uh, particular pen model. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, very uh, you know, beautifully styled type of pen for if you prefer the rollerball or felt tip type modes. So um, take it for what it is as it is. It's it's a it's still an, it's still a beautiful looking Parker pen. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, and stay tuned tomorrow at 9 p.m. There will be a premiere. I'll just write that down here. 9 p.m. Thursday. I'm butchering the spelling of things here. Uh, December 13th. We are premiering of the Diplomat Aero Fountain Pen Review. So we'll be on there to chat while you guys watch the video. It's, it's, it's a fun video, so definitely uh, come in and take a look at that on YouTube. So. Appreciate you guys tuning in again. Blah. Appreciate you guys tuning in again and uh, stay happy, uh, stay healthy, and stay inky, my friends. Take care.